Hi. It's me. <laughs> Uh, if, if y'all can hear me, if you can hear, uh, possibly, hopefully, the music I have on in the background, that would be good information. <laughs> Hello! Hello! We can hear you, but the music is not coming through. That is just rude. <laughs> yeah, that is rude. <laughs> Hmm. Just because you have Firefox, um, so I don't know. Maybe it's a an audio Firefox setting, but yeah. But you're at least coming through. Just letting you know. I'm gonna go back. Hmm. Well, you know, then that's all of your bad luck. Then you just have to listen to my voice only. <laughs> so, uh, like you probably all know, I I drew up uh, two sketches of our. Taslina as a little warrior princess. Uh, one close, like a headshot of her, and one on her way yeah. into battle with her uh, Newman sword. And after letting all the Wigglers decide which one to uh, make liner it off and turn into a, a coloring page, uh, it ended up in a tie, and now I will have to do both. <laughs> Which, in all honesty, is a good thing. So, I thought we can start with this one. When I do a sketch, I, I normally start by doing, uh, like, the base of the otter. Like, as you can see here, I choose for certain parts of the drawing, I choose different colors. Because it makes it easier to work on it. So, for basic armor parts, I went with red, for the other with blue. And when I'm done with the sketch, which can take a while, here on the side, I have my different layers. And as you can see, I forgot to name that one. <laughs> this is my sketch layer, and here I can set it to a opacity where I can still easily see it and choose my line art color which normally I go with black and I personally it, it took a while to find uh, my pen for line art uh, I use one of the classic pens that Krita comes with hi jelly <laughs> and It, it sounds simple, but then I just start. <laughs> it takes a while, because when I first started, it was very, very shaky lines. A lot of people uh, use these helps here on the side for line art. Because they help uh, stabilize your lines, which makes it a lot more comfortable to draw, to be honest. If you have any questions uh, on, on any of the art I did, uh, I would be more than happy to answer them. To be honest, I've, I've never learned how to draw at any school. I just drew a lot. <laughs> so... Here's... Here's a tip for, here you can see I used, like in my sketch, I drew, uh, like, leather bands that hold together the armor parts. In my sketch they're pretty straight, which makes them seem, uh, which makes them seem a little bit fake. So what I normally do is I do this. Give them a little movement. Because if we're honest, if you ever like put a belt on, there's always this little part of the belt that just goes Wah! And that's what makes it look real. Okay.
So we're gonna add that on the other side as well. And you know, I am I'm drawing with a uh, Wacom uh, Cintiq 16, which is like a uh, like a desktop screen thingy, or you can directly draw onto, which makes life very easy, if I can be honest. And we can see adding this little twist to it always gives it more energy. It sounds weird because it's just leather, but hey, as long as, as, long as it works. I don't remember... Yeah, <laughs> why it is native. That's exactly who she is. I don't remember who talked about uh making the feathers in this design because uh the first the first design had feathers because i don't know i thought a, a warrior feather mohawk would be fitting for her but someone yeah. talked about making it into kelp and for the second design i was like you know what that's that's actually a great idea and it would make sense so the way i try to make kelp feel alive is trying to draw in uh, folds. Like when you take a piece of ribbon and twist it a little bit, these folds. So, and, and that's how I do that. You see, it starts here, flat, and then it bends over. And goes along here and now we have here this little fold and after shading it it will get a lot more depth to it so we can clearly see when taking a first look at it that it's bending its way with the wind It's, it's a lot of those things now. <laughs> and you know what's the best about uh, digital art? That you can just press control set and erase stuff. That's great. To be honest, side, uh, Lo Loana, Ioana. I'm very sorry about not knowing how to pronounce your name, but you can tell me how to pronounce it, and I will, I will try my best. I only started drawing otters when I learned of Joey, uh, and I'm not that fond of drawing uh, animals at all, if I'm honest. I'm more of a human people, like, I, I, I like that more. But you know, when you see a cute otter, you don't have another chance. You just have to draw it. And the good thing about making these sketches lighter is that it doesn't get as overwhelming to draw the line art because if you keep them at full opacity for me at least it gets a little bit overwhelming so that is very much better <laughs> you also do this when you do digital art the wrong layers Of course, Tessie has small ears. 
Iwana. Okay, good. I can I can remember that. <laughs> and here we have another twist. And the kelp mohawk is done. What I do because I'm a little a little weird with my line art. I really dislike when there's like uh these things, you see? Because my brain's always like, everyone's gonna see that. So I take a smaller pencil and correct that. Or here. It's not very clean. So I go in with a harder eraser. And then we have a nice line. Okay, so now that we have the headpiece finished, we need a head to wear it. So we're gonna switch back to the thicker uh, pen. Let's start with the adorable snoot. Also, since I already got you all here, uh, the reason why the Task Talks uh, otters, the female ones, all have lashes and only uh, the male ones have eyebrows is because it's something I saw in all of these old school comics. You can always be 100% sure the female character has beautiful lashes and the male character has prominent eyebrows. And when I thought about, hmm, how am I going to make this happen? I looked at that and was like, yeah, actually, that's a good idea. And all of the otters have their, the female otters, have their lashes at different parts of the eye. Cunic for one, let me, let's make a classic eye. Uh, Cunic's eyes normally consist of an orb. The, uh, the eye bags, as I call them. And very, very low lashes to make her eyes look a lot more tired. And for Katmai, next to her obvious crown, of course. I often go with a more uh, prominent upper lash because... Well, it makes her look more... Exactly! Uh, buggy eyes. Like, uh, Kunik has buggy eyes. So, I always try to make her look like that a little bit and Katmai has those pretty princess eyes for me let's draw them cute eyebrows What I like about I, I drew the the eyebrows on another layer. I do that because when the art has eyebrows, I can just move them. And if we push the eyebrows a little bit into into the eyes, then go to our eye layer, which sounds weird. And erase a little bit of eye that's in there now. 
It gives her more of a battle-ready warrior look. And now it's time to draw the floof. I'm gonna start with the ears and work my way around. Yes, um, for the male otters, I have uh, the basic design of the otter uh, as a Krita file. I'm using the program Krita, uh, which is free to use, so it doesn't cost anything. And the thing about that is, if I keep it in that format, I will always have these layers to work with on the right side. And so because of because the male otters, I use the eyebrows to articulate a lot of the emotions. So having them on a separate layer and then just moving the eyebrows around to give it the extra the extra twinkle, <laughs> let's say it like that, uh, makes it easier to convey any emotions. I don't think a beauty mark would look good. Nah. Looks like a mole. <laughs> a weird one. <laughs> okay, now we have a little ear. And in this ear, if it's like big pictures, like a bust shot of, of characters, I always put in the ear folds. Ta-da! A little ear. Now we go to the mouth floof. I started after someone told me about that. I started to connect all of these lines by making smaller strokes for the floof. Because people often use uh, paint to uh, do their coloring of the coloring pages. And it makes it easier for them to use. Since they don't have to fill in the blanks before they start. <laughs> That's actually a good idea. We should get a uh, warrior Tazzy into the test talks. <laughs> and now it's time for the classic chaotic head fur. And you see here, there's certain parts where it overlaps with another layer. And now our little warrior Tazzy has her classic chaotic head fur. Time to get to the mouth. And now the question is... My intent with this picture is to make two different line arts. One serious one, this one. And another one of her winking and doing a blap. Does it sound like a good idea or not? Too long, really stay <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so we're gonna do with uh, we're gonna go with the serious one first, and when we get the line art yeah. done, we're gonna do two little edits to make not, it uh, into the, the uh, winking blepping one. <laughs> yes, Warrior Tassie versus Akum. I think the Akum lost. Okay, now my favorite part of this of this drawing is actually the armor. Yeah. Uh. Vince, I am talking. I hope everyone else can hear me. I, the thing is, I don't talk all around the club because I gotta draw as well. <laughs> okay, so. As you can see, if I can, if my yes, it lets me. Uh, there's both on both sides. I made two emblems or clemblems. Oh god, that was a bad one. Uh, and I thought about how can I in include them and make them pop up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna use my smaller brush again. And make it literally pop off the uh, shoulder armor. And important with parts like that when doing the line art is if you do straight lines, it takes away the depth of the painting. So, what you have to do is you go with this line. Then you have this this 3D effect of the clam popping off. So we're gonna finish this one here. And we have a shoulder plate with a clam blem. I'm gonna stay with that one because it's too late anyways. <laughs> okay, we're gonna continue here. What I want to do with this part is, as you can see, I have these lines here, and I'm going to do what I did up here. Why I did that, and I'm going to do that right now so I can show it, uh, is you see I chose a very hard uh, eraser again, and when I go in and erase along these lines, it will make the edges look more sharp. I'm gonna show you. And that's how I often do lines for uh, armor, because it makes it look rougher Rough, rougher? Blah, blah, blah. I think my tongue is falling asleep. And gives it more of a harder look. So we're gonna make a, uh, a line from here to here. Slightly bent again. Because, of course, the armor is meant to fit the otter. Which is... I now realize how weird that sounds. We're gonna add those lines here as well. 
because it's important with with art like that that you have enough details so that it doesn't look all comic -y. Not me realizing that I made a uh, mistake. That's it. You see, some of these extra lines, when drawing them, you you wonder why, but then you have them on your painting and you're like, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, now we have another leather strap here because, of course, armor doesn't magically uh, stay on its wearer. So, we're gonna make another layer and draw a leather strap. Why I drew over here is easy to explain. Because if I go in with an eraser now and draw a little extra here, it looks like it's holding it on. What you can also do with armor is if you're not, if you're lazy and you're like, I don't want to draw. A lot of leather straps because honestly in all honesty it can be annoying you can also do this ta-da <laughs> simple connectors so we have this arm and now we gotta do the other one Again, if there's any questions, you can just ask. Exactly, and that's your chance to ask. While I'm adding emblems <laughs> I'm glad it's interesting to watch it's probably different than watching my speed paintings where it's just swoosh <laughs> Okay, and this arm, how to draw whiskers that look real. That's a, that's a good one. Tazzy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna whisker you. So, hmm, that's, how do I describe that? If you have a, I would choose a pen where, you know, you like drawing with it. Um, and then you... Put your pen down and then go swoosh. <laughs> it's just a lot of swooshes. And best is not to have them all in one length like I just did. What I always add is shorter ones. To make it look more natural. I draw on a uh, display tablet, it's the Wacom Cintiq 16. Uh, it comes with a pen that you can flip, one side has the uh, pen part, the other one you can uh, use as an eraser, which is very nice because you just have to uh, flip the pen. 
uh, my art program that I use is Krita. I've used it for forever, I think. I went with Sai for a little bit, but I wasn't the biggest fan of it. So, yeah. Well, let me quickly Google it for you. So you you can uh, see what I mean because telling people it's a display tablet often doesn't tell them a lot. So that's the one I use. It has this pen and it's it's actually like a second second display and it's very very comfortable to work with. You can see you draw directly onto it and it has a very paper feel to it. Back to our warrior now. When did I switch to white? <laughs> well, well, well. Everyone can draw. There is no such thing as not being able to draw. You just gotta find the motivation to try stuff and use references. If you wanna like learn to draw cute hamsters, Google hamsters and put the picture in front of you and then just try your best. All of art is just a lot of practice, but it's also very relaxing to do. Okay, so now what I want to do is add a little bit more detail to it. Gonna add a little border down here. And later on, when coloring, I, for armor, I like to add a little wear and tear, which I do. Let me quickly make another layer with very, very uh, thin strokes. Because when you zoom back out, it looks like the metal had been scratched or something. And it's all these, these small little details that often make the difference. And yes, you can get lost in drawing details. And then like two hours later, you look up and you're like, hmm, that's pretty nice hair, but I haven't drawn anything else. Yes, Jelly, please post a banana fish. <laughs> I love drying flowers, since uh, Vince is talking about it. Oh, oh, I get that, Bella. There are days where I have like the most amazing ideas in my head and then I'm I'm turning on the tablet and I'm taking my pen and I'm sitting down and I'm like, I'm gonna draw this. And then I'm staring at a white paper for hours. That is a stunning painting, Jelly. Look at that. Our warrior is coming along just fine. She is ready to defend everyone for the right amount of grooms. 
And now it's time for a cute fluffy paw. <laughs> you know, I can, when a liner is done, I can show you how you can actually get a nice structure from a simple stick figure, if you want to. Because a lot of people tell me, I can only draw stick figures, but in the most simple way, a stick figure is the start for all the human bases. And here again, I'm going in with the hard eraser to make the paw area here look more neat. And a fluffy paw. And because we're already here, we're gonna do Gustav. The Gustav Newman sword kind of thing. Which I drew like that because we gotta be family friendly and weapons aren't family friendly. So I thought, what can I combine into a sword? And it was Newman and Gustav. And I'm gonna use this little feature here because let me show you. Normal circle with that help tool. It does make a lot of things easier. <laughs> so I'm gonna, it's here, this little baby here. I'm gonna do the Gustav. And what I did here in the sketch is always adding a little bit uh, texture already with the line art. Because we all know Newman is not just smooth. Newman is a plastic tube and he has those little... I don't know how to call them in English, but he has those. <laughs> And for those, it's... Ah! Ribbing, exactly. And for those, it's also important to make them slightly bent. Because Newman is a tube and not flat. So we gotta give it a depth by making these lines a little bit bent. So you're all learning how to draw Newman too. <laughs> I can't let that stay. <laughs> but we we it is. Okay, so we're down to the body armor, which is also... I got the request to make it movable so that if she squishes, it squishes. So it has a lot of these connection parts. So it can move. Also, new stuff sounds like a great name for the sword. <laughs> Tazzy, the brave warrior princess wheeling the almighty new stuff. Yeah, that sounds great. 
I do like that. Also, if anyone can not read what all of these things here read, it's because it's in German, because I'm from Austria, so don't worry. You didn't unlearn English, it's not English. <laughs> What is important for clothes? When you're drawing clothes, which I barely do for the otters because, well, they have fur. They, they don't really need it. But as you can see here, you gotta make the clothes seem like they have a, a thickness. So this is how I personally do it. And to make it look like it has a, uh, a thickness, I'm gonna do this. You see, so there's this little space which shows that there is a small part between Tazzy and her armor. Oh, small teeth. Oh, teeth. Uh, excuse me. That's actually also a good one. I barely draw, like, I don't draw real otter teeth. Uh, I draw them the lazy way. Uh, when I draw the uh, Taz Talks characters, I go in and let me draw something here real quick. Okay, here we have a snoot. And if there's no teeth, we have the lip. Right here. But if there are teeth, I just replace the lip. It sounds weird. And add a little bit of tongue, because if the mouth is open, you do see the tongue. Okay, back to the armor. Yeah, it's actually uh, the way the uh, artist of the last MMRC live stream drew them. That's the real version, obviously. Uh, mine is just a simple comic version because sometimes you just need to see the teeth. <laughs> but it works. This is actually one of the harder parts when drawing stuff. If you have lines that should be parallel to each other. I hate doing these. <laughs> but here we go, the armor has a color. And if you uh, have kept an eye on it, when I finished a part of the drawing, I put the uh, layer I was drawing on onto the one below. So we have one big layer of finished line art. You see? And all I'm drawing new right now is on a separate layer. I do that because if I... Let me show you. If I start drawing the armor. I can go over here, 
This is like a bad version right now. And just go over with the eraser without having to be afraid that I am erasing all of the line art. So for every new thing I make line art of, I make a new layer to make sure that I can just erase big areas without losing everything. Okay, let's continue. Here you can see it right again. And it's gone. <laughs> what I did with the armor here is because it's supposed to adjust to movement of the little Tazzy warrior. It's different layers. So because it's different layers, we have this here. This area. You can see the this layer goes until here. And then a little bit below that, the next one starts. So they can click into each other, but still move. Okay, so we're going to erase the parts that we don't need because they're not visible. And we have another layer of armor. Okay, now the important part is, as we said before, if the these layers are not co connected, just imagine her standing up and all of these layers of armor just going... So, we gotta connect them. And I'm gonna go with the lazy option like I did over here. Just uh, some... Metal connections. Because we want her... We do want her armor to work out for her. Okay. So, now that the line art is done, we can get, we can make the sketch layer disappear and have our line art. We're gonna put all of our line art layers together and name that layer. Okay, so we got that. I'm gonna save that now, real quick. Thing is, I'm gonna save it as its original file. And as PNGs, because... As we said, we want her to be a winking GIF. So, as soon as it saves, there it is. We gonna make her wink and blip. So we're gonna go and add another layer above the line art. We can make the line art a little bit disappear. So we can see where the uh, actual eyes are. I think I'm gonna go with this eye. make a bean and add the lash on the side it was before. I 
and then we're gonna go and draw the blap. And since we now see where the old line art was, we can get our eraser and get rid of these parts. And now magic will happen because she's not plopping. That's the magic of layers. <laughs> now we can check if the black looks good enough. Oop, that was way too much zooming. I think that's a good black. So we can go and save that one as well. It's a magical warrior blep. The one to confuse them all. And now the question is... Good, we're back to the other one. Um, I'm gonna post the line art of this. Her war warrior cry. Hmm. What would be Taslina May's warrior cry? That's actually a good question. <laughs> well, obviously, yeah, don't fight the Tesnado. <laughs> we fight for a clam. <laughs> so, since I'm recording this, uh, for people who were unable to join. I know how long this line art took with me explaining. Uh, and that's uh, 58 minutes, which is close to an hour. If anyone would still be interested, I would still have time to uh, show you how I would color. Or as I told Bella, I can show how you can make a human base out of a stickman. It's like the, those two options. You can either uh, have stickman or color. <laughs> I can't do both, it's like 9 p.m. already. <laughs> we can do it like this. I can show you how you do the stickman thing. And next Sunday, I'm gonna show you how I color the others. If that would be fine with everyone. Also, what we can do... That was like the... This is like the second sketch. I'm gonna draw this one as well. If you want, I can also save line art drawing on this for another live stream. I'm willing to just adjust to that because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna open a new file. And I'm gonna show you... It, no worries, I, I saved. <laughs> They're already saved, so no worries. So, the stick figure thing. Uh, in all honesty, drawing humans is just a lot of forms. A lot of circles, so... That's the stick figure.
That's hard. <laughs> right there. Give it a nice size. <laughs> okay. And then I'm gonna start with the feet. How to get a nice face base. <laughs> Rhymes. You're gonna draw a circle. Forms, forms, forms. Face. And you can use your stick figure as an example, because next, of course, you're human. It needs a neck. So you're gonna go with a little cylinder. So we now have a face, well, a head, and a neck. And a vine, because my pen wanted to. Okay. And then we have arms here. And we see a stick figure arms I drew are way too short. But we're gonna use them as reference anyway. You gotta figure out here. Gonna make the stick figure a bit taller. Oh no! My paper is too short. There, better. <laughs> you gotta figure out the middle of all of this because. Man, Pug Mom, if I could make people taller like that, I would have done it to myself already. <laughs> uh, Jelly, you don't have to worry. I'm recording all of this and I will be uploading it later. So if you don't have time to grab a pen and paper now, no worries. So, the next thing about drawing a human is we gotta figure out shoulders and uh, upper body. So, we're gonna go and draw. To be honest, proportions are something when you look at it. When you have the skeletal thing done, and you look at it, you can still adjust. That's why when you're drawing these base structures, always use less pressure with your pen. Because if you use less pressure, you can erase it easier. Okay, so we have the shoulders. And what I do is this line here. I let it go all the way down. And then we gotta think, because what moves with the body is the upper body is a lot of rib cage moving. So... We're gonna draw a weird... Yeah, we're gonna draw sh shoulder pads. <laughs> that's that's a good... That's a good comparison, Pogmom. <laughs> and you know what's a good... Yeah, the line, the line is the spine. You can say this long line here, you can use that as spine. On this line, you have... This area. Where the neck moves. We have the head and the chin and the cheekbones. We have the whole upper body. All of this is connected to this line. What's also important, what I do when uh, drawing figures, is I mark the joints with circles. Like shoulder joints, as an example. And as you can see, the shoulder joints are a little bit bigger than the neck joint. I'm gonna call it like that. Because later on, the thickness of the arms will be what I orient on the shoulder jo joints. So, we have this right now, which looks interesting. I have to admit that. So, we're gonna continue. We have 
the rib cage. And then we gotta think if it if we wanna go with a female body, there will always be a little bit more uh focus on the hips. Because we know women have a different hip proportions than men. Men are more like more like this. And women, if absolutely simplified and into extremes, are like this. I see. We have more f focus here. Time to erase. So I'm gonna go with a woman here because, in all honesty, I'm better at drawing women. <laughs> so. This is the stomach area where we have possible muscles. But because I, out of experience with myself, don't know what a six pack looks like on a woman, I'm gonna put the belly button there. Magic. So we now have the upper body with the belly button and our shoulder joints. And now it's time for the hips who don't lie. You see, we can, it's very geometric. Oh, uh, the, the horned one, that's all dear. She's half thiefling, half elf. Okay, so now we have the hips. And you see the line still continues to go through. And that's the length of the line. It actually goes, if you draw the character or the person, front view, goes from all the way up from that to below the hip. And now, because we will need to draw legs, uh, we need hip joints. And because you can see there is a lot of space right there, we're gonna make big hip joints. Big circles. And what's great about these circles is if, well, in digital art, you can later on just turn the, <laughs> yes, the bum. <laughs> you can later on just turn the arm around that joint. You can also do that in, in traditional art by drawing multiple arms, like To figure out what position you would like for your arm. But since we're talking about arms, let's continue with arms. I do... I, I'm actually not sure where I learned to draw them. But for arms, it's just a few lines. You start here. And... Always make them go a little bit closer together at the end. So not absolutely parallel. They just get a little bit closer. Too exaggerated. And then, because we all have elbows, hopefully, if not, that's also okay. We gotta add another joint, the elbow joint. And then we continue with the lower arm. If you take your arm and uh, 
straighten it up right in front of you, you can see you can see exactly how your arm is built. It from the shoulder where it's uh thick because there's a lot of muscle and the huge shoulder joint goes down to your elbow where it gets a little bit slimmer. And then there is another joint, which is why around that joint the arm is a little bit thicker again. So we gonna draw that like that. We gonna draw. A lot of people have these. You can clearly see them when you, when I draw it. You you'll know what I mean. And because we're going towards this very small uh, joint, the wrist, we gotta make these parts go closer together again. And add the wrist. And now our little figure also already has an arm! Good for them! And because I'm a lazy digital artist, we're not lazy, we just have amazing tricks. I can copy and paste the arm. But what I can show you now is what I mean with... Uh, the joints are very useful for placing arms, because... If you keep that arm on the joint, you can... Whoop, easily figure out where to best place it. Or if you want to... Sassy on the hip. <laughs> yeah, YMCA! <laughs> exactly. But yeah, all these joints are nothing else but just something to help you when drawing your stick figure. <laughs> So, we have the upper body. And now... I'm gonna draw a basic way of, of hands. <laughs> I'm not that great at drawing hands, so... How I show in sketches where... How I want the hand to be placed is I do it like this. If the hands are turned to the side, you have to remember that when the character is looking forward, you will always see the thumbs. So... Thumb. Hand. And then, if you want to do those fancy hands, you can just add a little finger. Fancy hands. But that's pretty much the best hand I can do. <laughs> Hands are every artist's uh, nightmare, I would say. And what I like to use for hands is... Uh, t I take pictures of my own hands. In the pose where I want to draw them. Because, honestly, references are your best friend. Especially if it's stuff like hair flowing in the wind, or hands, or animals. Because animals are really hard to draw. Well, my paper is still too small. <laughs> Good thing about digital art is that I can just make it bigger. Ta-da! Okay, so now we have the whole upper body. Which only leaves one thing. Legs. Legs are pretty much like arms, but larger. You start at the corners of your uh, circle. And towards the knee, they get together a little bit more. And then we add the knee joint, because, well, we like joints. 
Yes, wins. As I said, please don't forget, I've never learned this. It's just my own tips and tricks that I use to draw stuff. Because it's always nice to get some information. <laughs> Upper leg. And there it is. And now we again have, like we had with the arms, the knee is a joint, so it's a little bit thicker there, but it then gets more slim when we get towards the ankle. So we're going to do what we did with the arms. Make it a little bit chunky. Make it go down. And then add the ankle joint. It's, as you can see, I'm drawing a very, very simple base without any motion or uh, the body moving in any way because that's the easiest way to actually learn how to set it up. And for the feet, because we see them from the front, so in a side foot, I would draw like this. We have the this line here. That's how I would draw a side view. But since we have this character standing front facing, we gotta go like this. And then of course, because this just looks like a Oof. We gotta add toes. It's like a very, very basic skeletal setup. And here again. If I mark off one of the legs, because, whoop, well, that's a lot of movement I didn't want. Can, we can go and adjust the leg. Because the joints are here to help. And all in all, it's nothing else. Then a stick figure. You just make the stick figure a little bit thick. <laughs> and add those weird fancy fingers. <laughs> and because I think, let me see nice, I can now just a little sneak peek how I do faces like human faces otter faces, you all know how I do otter faces very squishy, big snoots, a lot of floof Here you have the chin, cheekbones, cheek bones, and here on this line, there's nose and mouth. Oh, look at you, Jelly! 
That's amazing! See? It's just... Geometry. <laughs> and here, I... Add a little nose. Some bushy eyebrows. Ta-da! <laughs> no worries, Jelly. I just wanted to show how then it continues with the face because this whole circle and extra lines thing make the basis for a face. Well, thank you, all of you, for coming along. If you want to, I can save this as well, and we can continue that next time as well. Uh, I will be posting the finished GIF in Otter Space, and of course on the MMRC one as well, and the line art for you all to color in. And I hope we can do this again next Sunday. It was a lot of fun.